Hey there, people of the grid. It's the weekend. It's kind of like Groundhog Day. Every day is the same as the next. Same routine, pretty much, but the weekends are nice. We still get to do some cool stuff on the weekends. This weekend, I'm going to tackle something that's been waiting to be fixed for a while, which is my daughter Amelia's Nintendo Switch. The uh, cartridge slot stopped working. Check this out. When you put the cartridge in, it is supposed to supposed to come up but it doesn't it stopped working a couple of months ago and uh, Amelia hasn't even had to been able to play one of the best games available Zelda so there's a little part that is the cartridge slot actually it's actually a combination part it's uh, there it is oh like other things it's too is made in China it uh, has the cartridge slot but it also incorporates the, the headphone or the head, yeah, the headphone plug. So if you have uh, a Nintendo Switch with a broken headphone plug, this is a, it's a single electronic unit. So we're gonna open this guy up. We're gonna take out the old one, put in the new one, and if all goes well, we'll have a working switch for Amelia. All right, let's crack this baby open. So on the top, on the top of the switch, there is a tiny, tiny screw. I dropped it, I had to go hunting for it. Uh, so don't lose that. And um, on the sides, you just have to take out the middle screw and then we'll be able to take the backing off. Now when I take screws out, I kind of like to lay them out somewhere. I tend to lay them out in the same pattern or location of where they came from so that when I go to put them back in, it just makes them easier, makes it easier for me to put them back. So here's the layout. You get the picture. Screws on the side are for the side, the side, top, top, bottom, just makes life easier. All right, let's, uh, let's pull the back off this guy. All right, the first thing we're uh, gonna pull off here is the SD card connector, which is this guy right here. It's got one silver screw and basically all of the silver screws that hold the backing on are the ones that we're gonna be taking off so that we can take off that backing. And we just lift this guy up like so. Got a little connector in the back here that should just pop right off. See, that connector drops into that spot and just seats into it nicely. Next, looks like we've got uh, six screws we've got to remove. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now when we 
get those screws out, this should just pop right off. Got a little bit of uh, heat sink paste. Just put that aside. And basically there's our cartridge slot with the head jack port. So that's the guy that we are going to be replacing with this guy right here. All right, so we're gonna start by taking off these two screws and this one, and hopefully we can just kind of lift it up and out. For the ribbon connector, you can see that uh, it's got a little tiny catch that uh, that ribbon cable seats into. So we just gotta lift that up on the old one to remove it. First, we'll take these guys off. All right, here we go. Number two, yep. Don't lose those. And the third one. All right, so that thing's loose now. And it's seated, you can see there's a little, little card that seats down into there underneath the cooling. Let's get this thing open. There we go. So that's up. And now if I can, if I can lift this guy off, then I won't have to uh, lift this thing up. Yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we're going to have to remove the heat sink. I tried to see if I could pry that up, but I probably could. I just don't want to bend anything and you'd have to kind of twist this guy. So there's three screws. We'll take the heat sink off. It's not attached up here. It'll just come right off. So that should be an easy, easy go. Now we should just be able to lift up the heat sink itself away. There we go. All right, this back part's off, yep. It's got some tape that just holds it down. And now, There we go, that's the heat sink. And now this little connector right here should ought to just come right out. Kinda like so. That is a tiny connector, which goes right there. So that's the dead one. There's our replacement part. All right, so we're just gonna kind of position it where it should be. And this guy needs to line up just so. And you'll know when it's in because you kind of feel a little click. Just a little tiny. There we go. Oh. I 
I think I got it in there because it's not coming out. So I'm just going to give it a nice press. And uh, yeah, so now we just have to screw it in and then we can hook up that ribbon cable. I wonder if it might be easier to hook it up when it's not screwed in first. We'll try that. Oh yeah, first try. That's pretty sweet. Okay, I think we can put those screws in and we can actually try to see if it works. Put this one in the wrong spot. This one actually should be over there because there's two over there and then the the whole shielding covers all of it. So there we go. These things are so small and so hard to put in. My screwdriver is slightly magnetized, which helps, but it's just, and I'm afraid to tilt it sideways because if I drop it into the switch, I don't want that. There we go, got it. actually worked pretty good. Well, you know what? I think we may as well go all the way and put everything back on because I need to get the uh, I need to get the heat shield back in and then I need to get the uh, SD card reader back in here. So, it's not that many screws anyway. So, we'll do that and then before maybe I'll put that back shield on and then I'll test it. Yeah. So far so good. So now it's just a matter of putting in the, uh, the SD card. And again, this one's going to be interesting because it's got a nice little squishy thing on top. I won't be able to feel. Will I? Let's see. It's lined up. I almost wish this thing wasn't on here just yet. It's a little padded foam pad. Yeah, let's take that off. That didn't take too long. Now for the moment of truth. Now, I did have one tiny part that uh, came, I don't know, somewhere from inside, a little plastic piece, and then the tiny screw that goes in the top, oh, there you are. It just uh, doesn't want to fasten in. So I'm gonna save it and not worry about it. I think, I think it actually, this little plastic piece goes under the plastic at the top and then this screw goes into it. So it doesn't look like it's moving much at all. Not gonna worry about it right now. Let's see if it worked.
Well, that's not looking good because that's the same message that we had with the old card slot. Hmm. I'm going to try a different cartridge. Please hold. Nope. Tried a uh, cartridge out of my, my Switch in Amelia's and uh, that didn't work. And I tried her Zelda in mine and it came up right away. So it's not the, uh, it's not the cartridge itself. It's still something beyond the reader. So that means that I've got a good reader here and a su supposed good reader uh, installed. I think what I'll do just to double check is I'm gonna open it up and make sure that that tiny, this guy right here, that tiny connector is seated. Um, it felt like it was, so I don't think that's the issue. I think it's something, something else in the switch, which means you gotta send it back to Nintendo. Okay, I'll let you know. I'll open it up, try and reseat it and uh, we'll see. Well, you know, it was actually worthwhile going through because I thought I'll dive back into it and reseat everything. And I was gonna give up and put the old one back in so that maybe we could send it off. But um, I looked at the new one, or I looked at the old one here, and I don't know if you can see that. This is uh, where that plug plugs into the motherboard and there's some some schmutz on there. When I super magnify it, like to 10x on my on my iPhone, it looked like something leaked, some kind of a dab of glue or something melted and fried through, and it looks like it may have leaked down underneath to the connector. So I got some isopropyl alcohol. I cleaned off the uh, the the cooling fin, and I cleaned off the connector underneath on the motherboard. I also cleaned off the uh, connector that connects into the into the reader and I put it all together and lo and behold it started working so I'm doing a system update right now for Amelia because it's been a while let me see here there we go look at that Zelda and it doesn't complain some necessary data cannot be found it will be downloaded now we're going to download it's not complaining about the cartridge being in there and it definitely is in there so uh I'm pretty happy about that. That's a thumbs up. I think we spent about 25 or $30 USD on the uh, replacement thing. We didn't have to order the screwdrivers because I had them from when I did the joysticks. Same screwdrivers are needed. And uh, yeah, it worked quite nicely. Taking it apart and putting it back together again the second time went a lot quicker because now you know which screws you're going after. Nice. You want me to fix your Nintendo Switch? Cartridge or controllers, just let me know. $50 an hour. $50 an hour. Ooh, this just in. Apparently, uh, this little bad boy, oh, crap, this little bad boy was $80 Canadian, so that's probably uh, $49.99 US. But that's what it was, and that also fixes a head jack problem. Uh, so if you have uh, a problem with uh, sound coming through the uh, headphone jacks. This is the same one in the same piece. All right, that is how you repair your Nintendo Switch. Miker out, hope that was useful. <laughs>